Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Warbands! In this video we are playing Warhammer 40k in a 500 points match that sees Death Guard vs Necrons. I'm Simone and I will play Death Guard. Hi, I'm Andrea and I will play the Necrons. Before we started, if you are subscribed to the channel, welcome back! If you are not subscribed yet and want to help us, join a growing community now by clicking on the subscribe button and don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss the next bot reports. Thank you guys! Today's mission is Outriders. The two armies will have to deploy within these two areas. There are four objectives and they are arranged in this way. As secondary objectives, Death Guard have chosen Slay the Warlord while we stand we fight and engage on all fronts, while the Necrons have Slay the Warlord while we stand we fight and Dominion. The match will last 5 rounds, at the end of which whoever has accumulated more victory points will win. Both armies start with 3 command points as both are organized as combat patrol. Let's move on to the description of the armies. The Necrons awaken and immediately recapture their homeworld, but just when they had managed to sweep the last resistance of the inferior races, a handful of Death Guard soldiers landed on the planet. Poor things, they don't know what trouble they've gotten into. My army belongs to the Mephri dynasty, which adds 3 inches to the range characteristic of my Necrons range weapons, excluding pistols. Also, it gives them an additional minus 1 penetration if the target is less than half range. It allows me as well to activate both directives of the Protocol of the Vengeful Stars. The general of the army is the Overlord, who is equipped with the Staff of Light and the Resurrection Orb. As general trait, I chose the Dynasty trait, Merciless Tyrant, which gives him a plus 1 to the strength and attacks characteristics. The relic I gave him is Voltaic Staff, that replaces the Staff of Light. Next on the list are the Immortals, armed with Gauss Blaster. I think that I will use them to help the Overlord control one of the objectives. Then there are 11 Necron Warriors with Chaos Reaper, an Assault 2 weapon that will unleash Hell on the enemy if they try to charge me. And finally there is the Canoptech Doom Stalker, equipped with Twin Gauss Player and a Doomsday Blaster, which has two powers of fire, low power for when it moves and high power when it doesn't move. I hope he will be able to eliminate Simone's unit without much effort. Typhus is once again on a war footing and this time his target is the vanguard of the Necron's army. The planet is currently in the hands of the Necrons, but the situation will have to change. Nargle's servant is here to scrap some metal. My Death Guard belong to the Plague Company Arbingers. The general of the army is Typhus and as general trait he has Chamber Rot. He is armed with Mastercrafted Man Reaper and Blight Grenades. He can try to manifest two psychic powers and knows Smite as base power plus two powers from the Contagion Discipline, Course of the Leper and Plague Wind. The core of his army is composed by 7 marines. The Plague Champion is armed with Demonic Plague Blade and Plasma Gun. Then there are 1 Plague Marine armed with Blind Launcher, 1 Marine with Icon of Despair and Bolt Gun, 1 Marine with Plasma Gun, 1 with Sigil of Decay and 3 Marines with Bolt Gun. Every model in this unit also has Blight Grenades, Crack Grenades and Plague Knife. Supporting the troops, there's a Biologus Putrefier with Sapurating Plate as a relic. He's equipped with Injector Pistol, Hyper Black Grenades and Crack Grenades. Finally, there are 14 Pox Walkers armed with improvised weapons, whose sole purpose is to attract enemy fire and try to survive as long as possible. Every model in my army has an aura called Contagions of Nargol and each round increases the Contagion range, starting with 1 inch in the first round up to 9 inches after the fourth round. All the enemy models inside this ability have their toughness reduced by 1. In case I have the initiative, I will aggressively advance trying to take possession of 3 objectives to take victory points from the secondary objective Dominion, otherwise I will close myself like a hedgehog trying to thin out Simone's unit from a distance. Since Simone has Typhus out of the field, my Doomstalker will take care of the marines, hoping to take them out before the second round. I have positioned the warriors to take objective 2 and still staying within 6 inches of the Doomstalker to protect themselves from the charges. In this match, the first round is very important. Andrea has an army with many useful units from a distance. For me, it's important to be able to reach him as soon as possible, and starting second for me would mean having to undergo 2 rounds of fire. It wouldn't be a pretty sight. My Putrefire will be in charge of holding the objective while the others advance in an attempt to reach the Necrons. Typhus starts the match off the battlefield as he will arrive in the second round thanks to his teleportation ability. I hope I can hit Andreas rear before he makes my units disappear with his volume of fire. Rolling for initiative, red dice for Necrons and green dice for the Death Guard. Five, that's nice. Damn, it's going to be a hard game for me. Perfect. Since I have the initiative, I can afford to advance and capture 3 objectives. In the first turn, the Protocol of the Sudden Storm Directive 1 is active, which gives all my units 1 additional inch of movement. 
In the common phase, my Overlord uses the ability My Will Be Done on the Immortals, giving them a plus 1 to hit in the shooting phase. The Warriors are the first unit to move, which advance and with that one, they manage to reach objective 2 by a little, while remaining within 6 inches of the Doomstalker. Then the Immortals move forward, bringing the Marines to short range. The Overlord on the other hand advances, and with that 4, he easily manages to get in range of objective 4. My most important unit is that of the Marines, I cannot allow Andrea to target it from the first turn, so I use the stratagem Cloud of Flies for 2 common points. The unit cannot be targeted if the firing model is more than 12 inches away or if the unit is not the closest one. Wait, what? This is a problem. My Doomstalker, thanks to Simone's stratagem, can only see the Poxwalkers. He then takes aim and fires his high-powered Doomsday Blaster making D6 shots to the Poxwalkers. Being an area weapon and being the targeted unit composed of more than 11 models, he can make the maximum shots. 6 dice at 4, just 3. With 10 strength, he wounds at 2. All wounded. The Poxwalkers don't have a saving throw, but they have the ability Unending Horde. I roll a d6 for each wound suffered and for every 6, a wound is ignored. Ah, not even one. Well, now the second weapon with its two shots at four. Both hit. Strength four and toughness four, wounds with four. Both. Two more hits to ignore at six. Nope, two more dead. Five fewer models. Well, the first box walkers live, but attracting enemy fire is their main job. I absolutely need to take out those marines, so I use two stratagems, relentless onslaught and talent for annihilation, for a total of two common points. Every unmodified hit roll of 6 scores an additional hit, and every 6 to wound inflicts a mortal wound on the target. Unfortunately, the immortals have to split the shots between marines and poxwalkers, because not all models in the unit are within 12 inches of the marines. Then two immortals fire 4 shots on the marines at 2. All hit, including a 6, 5 wounds at 4, just 2, with a mortal wound. 2 shots to save at 6 for the marines. And again, not even one saved. Evin also suffered a mortal wound for Andreas 6, one marine is dead and another is wounded. Now it's up to the remaining 3 immortals who fired 6 shots at 2 on the Poxwalkers. All hit, wounding with 3 for the highest strength, 5 wounds. The Poxwalkers save with the ability Unending Horde, 5 dice at 6. And again, no 6s, the usual bad luck with green dice. Here goes the first marine. And goodbye to you too, little sick friends, you have done your job. Now it's my overlord's turn, who has an assault weapon and can fire despite him advancing but with the minus one to hit. So he targets the marines with his voltaic staff and fires four shots at three. All hit, and thanks to the weapon's ability, every unmodified hit roll of six scores two additional hits. So six wounds at three, all wound. Six wounds to save at six due to the minus three penetration. Oh, what do we have here? No sixes as usual. The Marine's disgustingly resilient ability reduces the wounds of every hit taken by one, so of the 12 wounds they would have suffered, they suffer only six. Three more Marines died and another was left with a single wound. If I didn't use this stratagem at the beginning of the phase, they would have surely all died. The Boxwalkers have an ability that allows them to automatically pass any morale test, so the only ones who need to take the test are the Plague Marines. Having 4 Marines dead and Leadership 8, I need 4 or less. I was sure of it! My Marines are proving to be cowards! One of them runs away. I have to do the combat attrition test, for every one another model leaves. Thankfully, both Marines remain. I remove the wounded model. My unit is in a very bad shape now. At the end of my turn, I earn 3 victory points thanks to the Dominion secondary objective. I absolutely need more models on the battlefield, Andrea decimated my army in one turn. I use the stratagem the dead walk again for one common point. I roll 7 dice and for every 3 plus, a poxwalker comes back to life. Ok, nice, I like this, 6 poxwalkers return to their brothers, replenishing the ranks. The two marines move towards the objective trying to contest it in the charge phase. The Poxwalkers approach the marines ready to charge the immortals, so they don't get targeted by the Doomstalker next turn. The only ones who can shoot in this phase are the two plague marines, they both have plasma guns and target the overlord in front of them. Using normal shots, they make 4 hits at 3+. Plus. Not good at all, strength 7 and toughness 5, I need 3. I suspected it. Bad aim. It happens when you have too many debilitating diseases on you. It's time to charge. The two marines charge the Necron's leader. 
Two marines are enough to take out the leader with ease, so I try to eliminate them before they charge. I spend one common point to fire overwatch with the overlord. Four shots at six, not even one. Okay, that was scary, but now they charge. A three is enough for them to reach the Necron. That's good! Now the marines are in control of the objective. They just need to survive the fight. The box walkers also charge and need seven to reach the immortals. Oh no, six is not enough. I use a common point to reload the dice. Eight is great! The box walkers stagger forward until they reach the Necrons, being careful to steer clear of the Overlord, which is quite dangerous for them. Let's start with the box walkers who pile in, allowing everyone to attack. Then, once in position, they fight with 20 attacks at 4. Wow! We have 15 successful attacks! That's a lot! Having less strength, the box walkers wound at 5. Ah, not quite as much as expected. Only 5 wounds. Better than nothing, though. Zero penetration, so save with 3. Two wounds pass. Necrons have an ability that allows them to reanimate as soon as the attacks against them are over. I roll a dice for each dead, with 5 plus, and Necron comes back to life. Two dice at 5. I guess they're definitely dead. Goodbye, guys. With two immortals dead, two box walkers arise and join my ranks. There were few left, and look now, they will conquer the world. And now, the two marines. Having different weapons, I have to do the attacks separately. Two attacks at 3 plus of the marine with plasma gun. Only one hits. I need 5 to wound. Huh, <laughs> very funny. Now, the marine leader with 3 attacks at 3 plus. Two successful hits. Having the demonic plague blade, the marine wounds at 4. Remember when I said that the marines were the main unit of the army? I was wrong, I meant the box walkers. My leader responds with 5 attacks at 2 on the marines. All hit, wounding with 3. All wounded. 5 wounds to save at 5. I need to save at least 2 to make them survive. Yes! Three wounds suffered! This means a marine dies and the leader remains alive with only one wound, but is still in control of the objective, and that's the most important thing. Now it's up to the mortals, making six attacks at three at the box walkers. Hitting four. Four plus the wound. Just one. Unending horde. I must do six. Nope. He's resurrected and dead again. Go back where you were. This game has started off pretty well. The curse of the green dice hits him one this time. Let's just hope to continue like this. In the next round, I have to finish taking out Marines and Pox Walkers, in order to deny the secondary objectives to Simone and make my life easier when Typhus arrives. However, for the moment I'm ahead with 3 victory points. Let's see if I can increase them in the next round. Well, what can I say? The performance of my Marines was ridiculous. My real heroes are definitely the Pox Walkers. I didn't expect much from them except to see them die quickly, but instead they are still on the battlefield, numerous and eager to fight. In the next round, they may even eliminate the Immortals for good, and earn the honor they deserve. I have to hope that Typhus coming next round will help me get back into the game. Fingers crossed! At the start of the second round, the Protocol of the Vengeful Stars is activated, both directives thanks to the Dynasty. Then, thanks to the two controlled objectives, I earn 10 victory points. The first two move are the Immortals, who quickly disengage and move towards the objective. Then, the Warriors advance to try to shoot the Box Walkers. Unfortunately, with just a 2, I can't move too much, and only 8 warriors managed to get within range of the box walkers. The warriors fire at the box walkers 16 shots at 4 due to the minus 1 of the advance. 9 hit, that's good. Strength 5 and toughness 4, wounding with 3. 6 wounded. I only have an ending horde to save them with 6. Only one is saved. The other 5 sadly leave the battlefield. Next to shoot is the Doomstalker, who aims his Doomsday Blaster at the box walkers, making d6 shots. 5 shots at 4. 4 hit. Strength 10 and toughness 4 means wound with 2. 3 wounds. Rolling for the d6 damage. Nice. With d6 wounds for every hit, I roll an ending horde separately for each box walker. Go on with the first. 2 out of 5 are not enough. The second. He is dead too. For the third, I need a double six. I think I mispronounced six, I didn't mean double two. Now the Doomstalker second weapon that fires four shots on four. Hitting two. Same strength and toughness, so wound with four. Nope. My box walkers are dying like flies, but at least three of them are still on the battlefield. In the combat phase, the Marine attacks first, being the leader, he makes three attacks at three plus. All three hit. With strength 5, I wound a 3. 
now I'm not surprised anymore. Rerolling the one thanks to the plague weapon? Never mind. With minus one penetration, the Overlord needs four to save. Yep, he's safe. And now it's my turn to answer. Five attacks at two. All hit. Wounding with three. All wound. Having already a wound, the Marine needs to save all the attacks at five plus. I'm more than sure I'm lending my good rolls to Andrea. This is the first time these marines have failed to inflict a single wound in the entire game. As usual, my box walkers don't have to take the morale test as they pass it automatically thanks to the ability. At the end of the round, I earn another 3 victory points from the secondary objective Dominion, thus reaching 16 points. First of all, I earn 5 victory points thanks to the primary objective controlled by the Putrefire. The box walkers are sad that they have lost their playmates, so they move to try to reach them and possibly contest objective 4 at the same time. And as they say, better late than never, Typhus makes his grand entrance, positioning himself over 9 inches from the Doomstalker. In the psychic phase, Typhus tries to manifest Plague Wind on the warriors at 6+. plus. <laughs> These rolls start to be annoying, rerolling with a common point. The second power he attempts to manifest is Might, and this time on the Doomstalker. 5 plus to succeed. <laughs> Something finally worked! D3 wounds! 2 wounds to the big guy! Here you go, buddy! 10 wounds left for you! The Pox Walkers want to stay close to their friends and charge them. The friends immortals don't want to have stinking Pox Walkers around, so they spend one common point to shoot Overwatch. 6 shots at 6. Unfortunately, not even one. Perfect! With 9, they are able to position themselves in control of the objective. The second to charge is Typhus, who tries to reach the Doomstalker and needs 9. Still having to warm up his leg muscles, Typhus decides to stay where he is and do some stretching. My only joy in this game, the Box Walkers make 6 attacks at 4 on the Immortals. And thankfully, they don't disappoint. 4 dice at 5 this time. How? How can I not love them? No penetration, so the mortals save a 3 plus. Come on, guys. Just one. Let's see if their animation protocol set 5 can help them or not. Only an immortal comes back to life. He leaves the battlefield instead. Join us. We have the best diseases. The mortals respond with 4 attacks on 3. Hitting only 2. Wounding with 4. Just one. I need a 6 to save him. One comes and one goes. I'm sorry, man. At the end of the second round, we find ourselves with a very significant gap in points. I am at 16 victory points total and Simone is at 5. In the next round, I want to eliminate those Tempox walkers before they eliminate my immortals. Then, if I manage to remove Typhus from the battlefield as well, I would ensure my victory. After this game, I will appeal to Nargol to rank up these Pox walkers and place them in the Hall of Fame of the most deserving. Unlike the Marines who will instead be downgraded to simple well, dead. Even Typhus felt compelled to disappoint in every respect. I was expecting the warriors ravaged by Psaki powers and a good charge to the Doomstalker and instead, none of this. In the next round, he better redeem himself, otherwise there will be trouble. At the beginning of the third round, the protocol of the Eternal Guardian Directive 2 is activated. Then, thanks to the control of two objectives, I gain 10 victory points, thus reaching a total of 26 points. In the command phase, I use my Overlord's Resurrection Orb on the Immortals to activate their animation protocols. I roll one dice for each dead, and with 5+, plus, they come back to life. Nothing to do. In the movement phase, my leader moves forward, and once again, the Immortals disengage from combat to let the other units fire on the box walkers. The Warriors instead approach Typhus to be able to fire as many shots as possible at him. The Overlord begins the shooting phase by targeting the box walkers and firing 4 shots at 2. All hit, 3 plus to wound, all wounded. I doubt I can do 6 sixes out of 8 dice, so I remove them directly. Sorry guys, you did your best. Now it's my Doomstalker's turn with his trusty Doomsday Blaster pointed at Typhus. To be sure, I spend one common point for the stratagem talent for annihilation. With a 6 to wound, I inflict a mortal wound. Then the Doomstalker fires d6 shots at his target. Just one, one shot at 4. Hit, wounding with 2. 6. Mortal wound incoming, invulnerable save at 4+, plus, and obviously, a nice little skull. Perfect! Now I just had to roll the d6 wounds. 5 wounds through! 
Having the disgustingly resilient ability, Typhus would be left alive with only one wound, but for the sake of the game, let's just say that we're done. Worth the end of a particular game. This game was pretty much one-sided. Because of the green dice, Simone couldn't do anything he thought. Strangely enough, my Doomstalker managed to do massive damage on every roll he made. Having the first round helped me a lot, considering that Simone deployed Typhus off the battlefield and the Biologus was stuck on an objective. This allowed me to do what I wanted without any problems. Anyway, I'm happy with how my Necrons performed. Good boys! I don't think I can say much about the game's strategy. Andrea's first round was devastating for my army, losing almost the entire Marines unit before they could fire a single shot cost me the game. Then, okay, the dice were the final coup de grace. There must be some particular curse on the green dice, there is no other explanation. It will not be easy for Typhus to explain the results of the battle to Nargle. I have the feeling that someone is about to be punished. And with this, we conclude. If you like our content and want to help us grow the channel, we have an account on the platform Buy Me a Coffee where you can support us with donations. Any help you can give us to improve the channel is welcome. We are counting on you. The link is in the description. And if you have come this far, write the word curse in the comments to let us know. You are the best. And if you are not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you liked the video, leave a like and write us in the comments. We are always curious to know what you think. That's it guys, see you next video.